Jeff Weston, one of our hosts here on Category 5 TV, posted this on Facebook this week. Due to a completely avoidable but truly unfortunate mishap, my children are in the market for a new PlayStation 3. I can't find any new ones for under $250, seeing as the kids are paying for it. I need a lower price. Any ideas? Yeah. Jeff, what happened, man? So, uh, I've got a mantle yeah. that the PlayStation sits like on. Like a fireplace mantle? Or? Yeah, it's above the fireplace. Okay. PlayStation sits there. Yeah. All is good. It is secure. It is safe. The kids have been told when your controller dies mm, controller, yeah. and you plug it into the cable, yep. you do not use it to play on the PlayStation. Gotcha. Use one of our other controllers. Did they listen, Jeff? I would... Uh, it is painful for me to say that they did not listen. They decided, hey... Let's keep playing PlayStation uh, with it plugged in. And then one of them moved a foot too far back. Oh, no. And it fell six feet and bricked. And there we have it. I don't know yeah. if you can see this screen behind me. It reads, cannot start. The appropriate system storage was not found. And this is all yeah. you get? That was all I got. And so uh, the, the, deal, the oh. deal was with my kids that... Um, I will They're share responsible. <laughs> yes, uh, because it is completely avoidable and it's 100% their fault. Uh, they will not be getting a new PlayStation until such time as they can save up the money for 75% of the cost, and then I will pay 25% of the cost. So, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. computer. Um, well, I, I care too much about your kids to, to see that happen. We're going to see if we can fix this tonight. Uh, I hope we can. Okay. And then you will be on. I hope Robbie the kids are them. watching so that I become your favorite. <laughs> and I hope we can pull this off. Okay, so we've got this PlayStation Three here, and you know it's 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 an old unit. And and the fact is is that if you're going to find one new, it's good luck for one thing. But it's well, going to yeah. cost you a, pr a pretty good penny. You might as well buy a PS4. So why well, we've would had you stick this with a PS3? Like nine years, I think. Yeah. Um, but the re so I was looking at going for P, uh, PS3, but they're crazy expensive. Yeah. Like the cheapest I could find online for new, because I'm not really interested in used, sure. new was 250 bucks. I found okay, a PS... Well, that's, not, that's not terrible. No, it's not terrible. Mm -hmm. I found a PS4 for 350. And so I thought, okay, mm, well... Okay, that puts it into perspective. You know, we might, so why not a PS4? Because I've got all disc PS3 games. And even digital versions of games, and I have a couple on here, mm -hmm. um, you need to run an update with that may ha incur some extra charges to the game to get the PS4 compatibility. But a PS4 does not run the PS3 discs. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I would have to get oh. all new discs and everything. And I'm New games. You'd have to buy new games. Well, exactly, You're yeah. You're basically scrapping your entire game collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, this, this warning message, this error message Jeff says cannot start because the appropriate system storage was not found. So yeah. we have to assume that the hard drive that's built into the PlayStation is probably damaged or something's happened. From a six-foot fall, I assume so. Yeah, and what what does the hard drive have on it? Like, is it... Um, it's a t I believe it's 250 gig. Uh, yeah, there's, I don't know, there's like three or four games, I think, on there. Okay. So, which is not a big deal to so download those again. Yeah, yeah. But it's fact that this thing's bricked and if I got to buy right. a hard drive. So it's not so much the data that's on the drive necessarily in your case, more it's, it's the the fact that it just doesn't work. Well, yeah, and and is it just the hard drive? I mean, there's there's right. also oh. processors in there. Are they broken? Yeah. Are there any cables? Is is the yeah. board in there broken? Like okay. I just There's a laser reader in there so, too that needs to Oh, yeah, so absolutely. many things yeah. can go wrong. And okay, so the the good news is is when I look at this, it doesn't look like it's been physically damaged. So there's no. not it's not like it's been crushed or cracked or mm -hmm. or broken in half. So chances are pretty darn good that the the main board in there, it's it's a computer in right. all essences, right? And it, it is starting up. Yeah, it powers is, on. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the main board, from what I can see here, is, is most likely going to be just fine. Um, it's, it's a pretty solid state device. Mm -hmm. um, things are built into it. They're yes. not, like, you don't have, it's not like a laptop where the RAM modules can come out and you've right. got to reseat them and everything. And that's part of the whole idea of a console is it's a, a solid state kind of system. So that way, it's, you're not going to lose... Um, sorry, and we just had a, a little bit of a problem there, and I apologize for those who are watching live, but our internet is just a little bit wonky, so I'll give you a second to, to reconnect. Um, so because it's, so, it's built to be so solid state, 
you don't have the fear of like a processor popping off of the socket, for okay. example. Okay, a computer, right. yeah, that could Absolutely, definitely yeah. happen. Uh, with this particular device, I don't think we're going to see that as, as an issue. So that said, it could happen. You could have internal damage, mm -hmm. but we're not going to take that approach out the gate because it's pretty tedious to pull the whole thing apart and That's get in right. there. Yeah. There's a lot of videos online. If you, uh, if you do get to the point where you, you need to disassemble the whole thing, you're going to need a special type of screwdriver, and, uh, and there are lots of videos online to help you with that. Tonight, because it's saying that we've got a storage system problem, that's really what we're going to look at right. and see what we can do. Now, I've got an SJ cam here all set up. Let's see if I have, if I fire this up, Jeff, we should be able to actually see some close-ups, and uh, we'll see how that works. Here we go. Ooh. Ah. Make sure it's the right way. There we go. All, All right. right. So we've got a PlayStation 3 here. Yep. Uh, now, the only damage that I can really see, Jeff, is kind of like... A little on bit of the bezel scuff. here, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't look like we're we're you know looking at uh, <laughs> a completely destroyed system here. Yeah, exactly. We know that the hard the hard drive is probably the biggest thing. So first of all, thinking of the PlayStation Three or any kind of console device, it's essentially a computer. So we don't want to start messing with it. We don't want to be turning it on, seeing if it comes back, turn it on again, turn it off, right. turn it back on, because if the heads of your hard drive, and let's look at what a hard drive actually looks like internally. And this is an image uh, that was provided uh, by, uh, let's see, Remo Software. So you see that read and write head? Yep. That's a part of the drive that reads the magnetic platters. And it, if that has grooved itself into the platter and you keep turning it on, turning it off, that platter is going to spin. That's going to cause etching into the platter itself. It's going to cause permanent unrestorable damage to the hard drive um, and you can see it's basically you know think about an old record player and the way that those would exactly. work exactly and so if you scratch the needle into it it's going to damage it and it's never going to play right again right and it's funny because when this happened I was looking at a couple um, blog posts and stuff saying yeah. you know, what could be done and a sure. lot of them were saying turn it off turn it back on no. hold the power button and I'm going same thing with your nope, computer this not gonna do it no, just don't do it so smart move um, so what do we want to do we want to get the hard drive out of it and we want to do two things but okay. we're gonna do them at the same time we're gonna find out if the hard drive works okay we're gonna find out if we can get the data off of it and if we can we're going to do that but we're also in the process of that going to find out if it is damaged, if we need right. to replace it, if there's going to be any ongoing problems. Like if it did hit the platter, you might have some really bad sectors. Exactly. That's going to yeah. cause a, a problem down the road. Yeah. So let's get into it. Uh, as I say, we've got this tiny little camera here. Let's see if I can give you a bit of a better view. Okay. So, Jeff, we've got this little tab here which if yep. we pull that up and i'm going to let you actually do the work i've got a okay. a screwdriver right here all right i'll just get you to take out that blue screw all right perfect now i've turned off the power already while we were at black there okay okay so just pull that screw right out it comes right out is it magnetic that or uh the screwdriver is yes okay there you go okay and now, uh, right here, there's this be bevel that we don't have to actually do any prying or anything like that. Just drag it like that. Oh, okay. Come right off. Okay, and then you'll see that there's a drawer. That's and that right, drawer, for the hard drive. Yeah, that drawer lets you pull the hard drive right out. Okay. So you can go ahead and do that. Okay. Okay, so here is your, what is, in all essence, is a laptop hard drive. It looks like a 120 gig. Oh, it's 120, okay. Yeah, 120 gig uh, Toshiba hard drive. Uh, we're going to see what this thing turns up. And uh, we're going to do that with Linux. Oh, okay. Exciting. Okay. So how do we do this? Ready for it? I'm ready. I've got my laptop over here, just a Linux laptop. It's running Ubuntu 16.04. And what we're going to do, I'm going to grab a external chassis that has USB 3. Okay. Right? You might use uh, ESATA. Mm -hmm. You don't want USB 2 or USB 1 because it's going to be brutally slow. Yes. And you have to remember that as we're about to image every sector of the hard drive, it's more likely to fail during that time. Right. Okay. okay. So this is just a, this is a Kingston drive that, uh, let's see here. It has a solid state drive in it, but I can remove that solid state drive. And then I have a backplane for SATA headers. Oh, perfect. Okay. So this USB device basically converts 
um, SATA into the uh, USB 3. Right. Okay, USB 3 is fast enough. Um, ESATA is going to be lots of, lots of speed for you, 3 gigs a second. Let's just pull the screws off here. You know what I'll do is uh, let's bring this up on the camera here. Okay. Do you want to hold that for me? Sure. And just right down here. I see four screws for the uh, for the hard drive from the PlayStation 3. So we're just going to pull those out. Don't lose those. We're going to need them. So this process is so that we can safely, or at least more safely, determine if the hard drive has failed, is failing, and at the same time, because we're going to be actually copying it, uh, we're going to be able to... Oh, oh. And the, the SJ cam turns off after a couple of minutes' time because we're on battery power. I'm just going to fire that right back up. We'll see that come live again. Uh, we can do, There we go. Okay. We'll just give that a second. So I'm just going to pull that hard drive out of the chassis. Let's do this on camera. There we go. So it just comes right out once the screws are out. Simple. Okay. And then this particular device that converts it, I just put that into the back plane, and now this hard drive is accessible over USB 3. Wow, okay. so easy. It is easy. Uh, but the reason that we're doing this in this way is because imaging, or basically doing a data recovery, if you will, um, is going to make a copy of the drive as it's testing it. Okay. So if partway through it does fail, then chances are pretty good that we may have gotten some or all of the data right. at that point. So it, And then at least we're going to have a backup that's going to be something that we can fall back on. So I'm just going to plug this into my computer, into the USB 3 port, Make sure you plug it into the right port because your computer probably has a lot of USB 2 ports and then maybe one, my laptop has one USB 3 port right. and then four USB uh, 2 point something ports. Can, can I ask what the difference is? is Speed. That? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, two is 480 megabits a second. Mm -hmm. Three is going to be five gigabits a second oh, okay. up to. So okay. you're going to get significantly faster performance out of that uh, USB 3 port. Okay, so on my laptop here... Let's just bring up the screen for you. Okay, so there, we're going to do this through the terminal. I'm going to jump into the terminal here, System Tools, Mate Terminal. And there's a tool that we're going to use called DD Rescue. But in order to get that, there's a couple things we need to do. So sudo nano etc slash apt slash sources dot list and then enter your password. This is going to allow us to modify our repository list. What we need to do is we need to make sure that the universe repository right here is not commented out, okay? Because this, is, this tool that we're going to use is found in the universe repository. So with that um, not commented, because by default I believe it is commented, then you can hit Control o to save, and then Enter, and then Control x If you get a permissions issue, you forgot to type sudo. Because remember, I'm on Ubuntu. If you're on Debian, you can do this um, using su and, and be the root user. Okay. So now that I've got the universe repository, we're going to go sudo apt get update. That's going to download all of the package information for available packages. There we go. sudo apt-get install, and then it's, uh, it's actually going to be gdd rescue. Okay? So think about dd in terms of you know, disk destroyer or whatever you want to call it. dd is a tool that you can use in Linux that will do a sector-by-sector -sector copy of any device. Okay. But dd essentially assumes that the source is not in a problematic state. Okay. We know that this drive may have failed or may be pre-fail or may have some problems or some really bad sectors now that it's been dropped from six feet from the mantle. Yes. So we're going to use instead DD Rescue, which is basically a front end for DD that does things differently in such a way that it will um, work better if there are bad sectors. You'll, okay. you'll get more good data than you will from DD. Awesome. Okay, so that's installed using apt-get. So now it's a pretty simple command, uh, but first of all, now I've got that drive inst uh, plugged in. So if I type sudo fdisk-l, I'm going to see a list of all hard drives that are on my system. You see how SDB took a second to pop up there? That's the one. So how do I know if that's the right one? Now, my computer has not mounted it, so it's safe to do this. I'm just going to unplug it from my computer. Now, go back there and type sudo fdisk-l for list the available hard drives, and you see all I have is SDA. So now, as soon as I plug back in the USB 3, and then run that command again, give it a second to 
connect. There it is. So SDB is our drive. Once I've connected it, all of a sudden I've got this slash dev slash SDB. Okay. So that's our source drive. That's the one. So good news, Jeff, is that the drive is being detected. That's great. That's good great start. news. Absolutely. Good it's not saying nothing's there. Uh, so now we're going to use that DD Rescue, and you can see that it is installed uh, now. So if I type DD Rescue, it'll say uh, it's waiting for more information. What are you going to enter? It says both input and output files must be specified. Okay. So we're going to use super user do so that we have full access to the hardware. So sudo DD Rescue. And we're going to, here's what we're going to do, dash F and then the source device, so dev slash SDB. Backing up really, really quickly before I get into that, do a uh, DF dash H, okay? See my slash? It's 109 gigs free. Okay, that's something that is going to be a problem for me in this particular instance. This okay. is a demonstration, so yes, we'll get away with it. It's a 120 gig hard drive. Oh, what if it's full? Uh oh! I'm going to run out of space on my destination drive before I um, before I get to the end of the drive. That's so, good. We can just wipe your laptop. It's all good. It's <laughs> the PlayStation we're trying to save. Okay. And this is key too. We're going to write it to an image file. Oh. Okay. We're not going to overwrite my partitions. Right. We're not overwriting my hard drive. Never set your destination to slash dev slash SDA my hard drive. Right. Because then you'll lose everything on your computer. Okay. Instead, our destination is going to be a file. Mm. Okay, so I know that in my particular system on my laptop, I do not have enough hard drive space to do this image, but for you, make sure you do, okay? And I can, again, um, you know, I know that because it's a 120 gig drive and I only have 109 gigs free. So, assuming I had more space, and this is okay for the sake of a demonstration, so sudo dd rescue and then dash f and then the source, dev slash sdb. Don't specify a partition. We're making a, a, an image of the entire hard drive. Then our image, we're going to put that into our home folder on the desktop, um, and we're going to call this um, ps3.img. Then we have an optional parameter here to include also a log file. We're going to export uh, save to a log file. Okay. Why do we want to do that? With DD Rescue, I'm going to show you in a moment's time, you can actually resume. So if for some oh, reason okay. I have to stop, maybe I run out of hard drive space. Right. I can use an, an, an external hard drive, copy the image over, and continue on from where I left off. The log file allows us to do that. So check this out. Uh, I'm going to specify now, same folder, desktop as my destination, uh, ps3.log. Now, it could, I'm putting it on my desktop. You can put it anywhere you like, wherever you've got space. As soon as I hit enter, it's going to start the process. So far, Jeff, we've rescued 66, 98. There's our... Number's going amount. up. Yeah, it's going, it's moving nice and fast. The number I like, though, is the errors zero. Errors zero so far at 400 kilobytes red. Let's... Okay, so if this works, mm -hmm. does that mean it's not the hard drive that's the problem? Not necessarily. Okay. But... So what we're looking at here is we're doing an image to my hard drive and it's saving to not a hard drive but an image file. See that ps3.img on my desktop down at the bottom left there? That's the file that is now becoming an, an exact duplicate sector by sector of your hard drive from your PS3. Right. Okay. So as it's doing that, it's going to notice, oh, I'm having trouble copying this particular right. byte. Yeah. And then it's going to give us an error and it's going to show us. So if those errors climb up or if you start to see errors, then, then you know, know okay, this drive has failed or is failing or is not at all trustworthy. So if you see errors there, then we know that the drive is not trustworthy. Right. Now, f okay, l before we get too far into that, look at my progress here. 2.1 megabytes. I'm going to hit Control C to abort. It says interrupted by user. Now, remember what I said about using the log file? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to enter that exact same command now. I'm using the same ps3.img on my desktop and ps3.log on my desktop. And if I hit enter, watch where it starts. 2.2 megabytes. Oh, look at so that. So it instantly picks up where it left off. So I don't have to start over if for some reason this gets interrupted. So it's right. definitely a good idea to use that log file. And then we can pull that up anytime we That's need to resume. Smart. Okay. So... Just to speed things along, because this is just a demonstration, and I've already been through this process for you, Jeff, the good news, this process 
completed and errors were zero. That's awesome. Sort of. Yeah. So what so. is going on with my PlayStation? R uh, yeah. Well, Robbie already said that it doesn't look like the motherboard is destroyed and right. and so on and so forth. So I'm going to I'm going to abort this process now. You're going to have to let that go for many probably well, many hours. Yeah, exactly. Not that's necessarily speed. with 120. But I mean if if you're checking your hard drive to make sure it's safe, mm -hmm. you want it to do it thorough. So I'm not going to rush yeah. that process. No, 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 no. No, absolutely not. Now, nice thing too is because we're creating this image using DD Rescue, if the drive fails or even if 6 months from now if I've held on to that image if the drive fails, I can revert back by right. now DD Rescuing the file back to a physical hard drive. Okay. It can also be used to uh, DD Rescue to a Kingston solid state hard drive. Right. Now, okay. moving parts are gone and you don't have to worry about it. So you've got a, a much more robust solution. Plus, it's faster, it's better, it's, it's going to be more fuel efficient and yes. all the, the above. Right? But, but still won't make it kid proof. Still won't make it kid proof, but a little more kid proof. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to pull this drive out. We're going to pretend that we got there because we did. Yes. Uh, during my earlier tests. Well, that's uh, good. So, so I don't have to drive. buy a new hard drive. We don't have to buy a new hard drive, but do we have to buy a new PS3? So let's put this back in here, Jeff. Okay. Let's fire up that, uh, that action cam here. All right. Okay. So the process is exactly reversed. I'm just going to put this back together. Okay. So it's just like this. And Jeff, uh, I'll let you take the, the action cam. Please insert right. card. Okay. There we go. You getting dizzy yet? <laughs> okay. Here we are. So we're just going to reassemble this. It's an easy process, and we're not getting... Uh, fortunately, we're not getting into the entire PlayStation. Whoa, you're, like, so sideways. I'm so confused here, Jeff. There's that <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> go over wow. top. Yeah, go over top. I just didn't want the shine. The shine. I was trying to get the, sh get the shine from the, the lights shine. out. I, <laughs> that's true. the shine, man. <laughs> that's right. Fair enough. Yeah. I figured if I came on an angle, you wouldn't get as much light shine. Ah, uh, okay. You know, maybe somebody's excuse. got some but sensitive people peepers. feel like they're falling. That's right. Yeah. Everybody feels like they're falling now. Listen, maybe we just need to put one of those legal things about Category 5 may cause nausea. And <laughs> yes. Seizures. Okay, there Netflix. we go. Exactly. Yeah. Straight into here. All right. Whoa, Jeff. Whoa, Whoa man. <laughs> Dude, okay, I'm going to do both. You, you know what it is? I'm looking at the screen and not paying attention. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, okay, and I've put it in upside down now because I'm, uh, I'm here, every here, which way. Here we go. Okay. There. Here we go. Okay. There. It's in. All now, right. here's the thing. I want to give it a really good snug push okay. so that it's tight to the back plane. Okay. Okay? Because here is what I think the problem is. The drop kicked the drive off the back plane. But it's screwed in. No, it's not. Well, but this screw here. Oh, yeah. The screw on the top. But there's, there's a fair bit of play there, my friend. Is there? Okay. Look at the play here. So he's thinking this screw oh, is holding it in. Oh, okay. So consider the back plane is, is basically exactly like what I showed you here. Okay. Okay. It's this guy here. So in the back of that PlayStation, you've got one of these. And your drive plugs into it. And that kick from a drop will go, uh. And now it's no longer making contact with maybe the power or maybe the, the SATA header or something right. along those lines. So I'm going to put that back in here. We got all kinds of angles here tonight on Category 5. I know. Okay. Give it a good little snug push. And one thing I'll mention as I already, as I pull it out and put, put it back in many times, I kind of pushed it back this way as I was screwing it into the chassis. Okay. So it's not... So these screws have a little bit of play, too. I made sure that it was as far back in this chassis as I possibly could. Smart. Okay, so now I've pushed that in. Okay. Nice and snug. Now we've got this piece here, just the nice cosmetic bezel. Yep. Put that in. And finally, our screw. Just like so. Okay, nice and snug. Okay. There we are. Okay. This is the moment of truth, Jeff. If this works, 
then I bet you a million people who have dropped their PS3s, mm. they stopped working, and then they threw them out or are watching right no. now. Like no, you can't palming. throw out a PS3. Probably. Right? Yeah. Like, oh, I thought it was gone for good. Well, and, and truthfully, that's where I went to immediately. I'm like, right. yeah. it's not working. Ah, it's dead. crud. Yeah. So, okay, let's okay, fire up the TV. Working? Is it working? Well, let's, here, I'm going to kill the power here. Because I didn't realize our TV had gone to sleep. Okay, let's let it shut down. All right. Because this is, this is the moment of truth, Jeff. And right. I'm really hopeful for, for your kid's sake. For your sake, for your sanity, and for your pocketbook. And your kids' piggy banks. Yeah, it's true. Brought to you in part by RCA. Okay, here we go. All right. Please work. No signal. I've no never signal. been so excited. Have, uh, yeah? <laughs> what about the unboxing of the A? I'm that that was exciting, too. I'm equal excited. Okay, fair yes. enough. Wow. That's, that's like an emotional couple of weeks here. You should have seen me last week. <laughs> there's there's no so signal. Cried. <laughs> See, I know it's connecting because it just activated as controller number one. Yeah, okay. So the system's on. We're just not getting a feed. Not getting a signal. Now, we're using the AV cable that you brought. Yes, in order which to I, do this. I don't use at home. I go by HDMI. Oh. So, But the reason, <gasps> I, the reason I brought the AV cable is because no. I didn't know what you had. You brought the AV cable, but at home you use HDMI? Yeah. Is it possible that this... The, the PS3 has like a setting that tells it that you use HDMI? I have no clue, but I know they broke the HDMI cable. You can buy a new HDMI cable. I can, yes. Okay, so I've got an HDMI cable. We've brought the TV forward a little bit, and I've plugged in the HDMI cable. Um, let's try that. I'm going to just plug it into the PS3 here. I think it's running. Yes, it yeah, is. It's running. Okay. Because we're not getting anything off the AV cable, no. even though we were before. And we'll switch over to HDMI. Oh, look at that. Is it working? Look at that. It's a working. Okay, well, can you guys see that? I can't really turn the screen very That's well because okay. we had to... We have a short cable. S yeah, we got a short cable. Oh, look at that. Oh! It works. Now, okay, so one of the games I've downloaded is, uh, is Minecraft for my kids. Okay. Is, does my, is Minecraft All still right, there? so let's see. Oh, oh now there could be... Uh, uh. Minecraft. PlayStation Edition, that's the digital. Yeah, it's all there. Look at that. $250. Saved. Nice. Three children. Look at that. Saved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's trying to push 1080p to a tiny, tiny little screen. I don't right. know if the screen can handle it. But Jeff, there you go, man. Oh, man. The good news is, is it looks like we've been able to successfully get your PS3 up and running. We've, oh, there it goes. It's actually working. Uh, we've got an image that we've copied to the hard drive, and we've got, you know, how is that able to do? And the, oh, yeah, Ethernet's not connected. It needs connected, Ethernet right, for the yeah. Internet. Okay, so there we go. That's awesome. Robbie? Savannah? It's for you, my friend. You're leaving me hanging, man. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. That is All awesome. All right, we go. We did it. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> All right, so did you learn anything tonight? I wanted you to learn a little bit about data recovery so that you can create an image of these failing hard drives. Mm -hmm. Jeff, you could have had a worse case. It could have been absolutely unreadable. In absolutely. Which case, in which case, we would have just pulled it out, put in a, a nice Kingston SSD, and been able to get it up and running with a new yep. hard drive. Yep. That would have been option number two. The other thing is, we could have encountered bad sectors, and we could have gotten to the point where all of a sudden DD Rescue started erroring out. Well, the good thing is, is then at least we'd have a, uh, an image of your games that are downloaded right, to the hard yeah. drive. Then we could image it back to a solid state hard drive, install that drive, and you'd be up and running with all your data. Yep. So, so there are you know, a couple of different scenarios for you. Of course, this applies to your laptop computer, your desktop computer. If you've got a hard drive that is failing or has some bad sectors and you're not sure what to do, you can use DD Rescue on Linux in order to recover it, and save it to new hardware, save it to an image file, so that you've got a really good backup of that particular hard drive. It's like, it's like taking a hard drive and zipping it into a file and saying, okay, now I've got it because now I can buy a new hard drive and I can now bloat it onto there and right. now that's an exact duplicate including the UUID of the entire hard drive so you can just boot from it and it's that's good to go. That's awesome. See, and it's funny, now you've got me thinking going, I wonder if I should do like a, a, an image of my PS3 hard drive every month just in case my if kids... If there's data do on there, again. the way I look at it and backups are the same, if there's anything on your computer that you can't 
lose or that would be really hurtful to lose. Um, I look at my laptops and everything. My laptop here, you know, I really don't want it to get stolen. We've Fair had enough. that happen. If it did, there is nothing, absolutely zero on my laptop that I don't have elsewhere right. that I need, that that's I smart. care about. The only stuff that's on there that I don't have elsewhere is temporary files, right. renders of video and stuff that are already on the internet and already on my server. And yeah, that's so right. it doesn't matter. So, um, so that's where you want to be. PlayStation's no different. Um, if you've got games on it and save games, the kids are going to be heartbroken if they lose saved games. Yes. They've worked hard to get there. All they've the worlds built, in Minecraft. Worlds. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. So it's important to have a backup of yes. that, I would say, absolutely. And now you know how to get into the drive. You know how to get it out, how to do an image. And then if it ever came down to it, we could image it back to a new hard drive, and you'd be good to go. That's awesome. Is there space on your floor where you can put it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's do one, one better. Okay, Jack. <laughs> Here's what happened. He plugged, uh, your daughter plugged in the controller yep. to the PlayStation up on the mantle, moved back because it was a very exciting moment in Minecraft, and, and crashed it to the floor. Okay, yep. here's what I want you to do. I want you to go out and I want you to get some wall warts. Some, I'm sorry, what? Some wall warts. Some 5-volt USB adapters that you plug in to the wall that gives oh, you okay. a USB port, and typically you would use those to charge your phone. Right. I want, I want your kids to have access to that, so now they can plug that in to the outlet, Smart. plug the controller into that, and if they pull on it, it's just going to come out of the wall. That is a smart okay. idea. You can get them at the dollar store, Jeff. I know. I bought a few <laughs> at the dollar store. Okay. Yep. I want you to do that. Don't waste any time. My kids will be buying them from the dollar store. That's right. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's their punishment. That's right. That's perfect. Please. <laughs> Take them to the dollar store. I want pictures of them standing in the electronics aisle with their wall warts. Okay? Done. We're going to see those. You know, you say wall warts, and I'm thinking of something out of Harry Little Potter. Little five-volt transformers. Like it, eh? Little <laughs> five-volt transformers that you charge your phone off of. That's right. <laughs>